I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was giving you a hard time. <laughs> All right, so. It's, it's like you're calling me. I keep wanting to go over there. <laughs> so, first up is. So. Tell me your name. We're sitting here with Ungayo Bilam. Yeah, the, well, tell me your name and kind of your uh, role. My role, Flyer Kaiser. Here. No, let's see. Well, I'm a hip activist. I'm a stand-up comedian. I love West Coast. Uh, I'm the editor and producer of West Coast Canvas Magazine. I do a few different canvas festivals and comedy shows throughout the year as well. I do fundraising. I'm on the fundraising committee for Americans for Safe Access out of Sacramento. Uh, I've been coming up here to the Seattle Hemp Fest at least five or six years. I think I also came up to one or two in like 93. And I think it was on the flyer for the one in 90, but I didn't show up because nobody had called me. I had called, and I don't think I ever got a call back. And then I came up months later and saw my name on a flyer somewhere. I don't even know. It was, just, you know, and then I realized I had to, like, the thing about the Hemp Fest is very old school, hippie style. So when it first starts, you can't really, like, at least back in the day, you, like, call, but nobody would really call you back. But if you showed up, right, ready to go, ready to work, that's really what I did my first year. I just kind of showed up like, yeah, my name's Ungayo. I'm a stand-up comedy. I talk mostly about marijuana. Maybe you can slide me in right up here. And I managed to talk my way on stage, smashed it. And then now I come back, man, it's beautiful. I would hitchhike up here. I'm dead broke right now. And yet I'm loving it. It's the 20th anniversary. How can you mean you can't miss it? We're sleeping in your car. We'll let him go by. We'll let him go by. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you very much. What's your, what is the passion that drives you? Why are you here part of this? Even if you weren't a speaker, why is it important for you to be here at this event? One, I, one I, love, I love marijuana. This is the reason it's important. It's one of those things where, you know, I think it's important for people to see the positive aspects of cannabis and marijuana. It's all these people coming together, 300,000 people, 400,000 people are gonna be here over the course of this weekend. But there won't be any fights. You know what I'm saying? There's not gonna be any drunken vomit. Right? There's not going to be any problems like that. It's everybody gets together, has a good time. They go out on the town. Right, The hotels right now are packed. The restaurants are very happy. Everybody downtown at the farmer's market and throwing the fish and all that, they love it when Hemp Fest is in town. They love it when Hemp Fest is in town. Stoners are hella cool and they tip well. So, And they eat good. So you can't, I mean, it's all beautiful. And come on, you get chocolate covered strawberries up here. And it's just, man, Hemp Fest is fantastic. And it smells good. It's so weird being in a public park and having just this, you're just walking around uh, continually. You know? To me, that's the thing, like I'm from San Francisco, California, so maybe I'm spoiled. The park is supposed to smell like weed. That's how you know there's gonna be no problems, right? I'm always weirded out when I'm somewhere else and I go to a concert, like a reggae concert or something, I don't smell marijuana. I always get a little nervous, like, is there gonna be a fight? You know, I did the, I do a lot of hemp fests and I did the State of Jefferson hemp fest last year and uh, 3,000 people, fantastic. Pato Bantan was off the hook. There was only one almost fight. Everybody broke it up before it became a fight, but it was between a drunk guy and a guy who was clearly tweaking. Those are the two guys who managed to try to get in a fight at the freaking hemp fest, right? Everybody else is jigging the music. It's just, it just, you know, it kind of all brought it all together to me. How does Seattle Hemp Fest compare to other hemp fests around the country? Well, first of all, Seattle Hemp Fest is the biggest. It's it's like a Shriders convention out here. It's like a, it's like the Democratic National Convention of pot smokers. It's everybody comes in from all over the world, man, from all over. Like, you know, this is the one you know where everybody will be at, right? You go to the state of Jefferson, it's be mostly the cats from Southern Oregon and Northern California, which is perfect. It's a beautiful size. Uh, Portland gets a lot of people. The Missoula Hemp Fest is really cool. It's only one day, and they're very hemp in their hemp fest. They're not really, it's not the, they call it hemp, but it's really about marijuana or cannabis. It's about hemp. Um, I'm going to the Madison Hash Bash or Harvest Festival this year. I'm looking forward to that. But it's really, this is the biggest. It's probably, it's like, it's like Daytona because it starts off the whole season. Because after this one, then all the other ones go. Um, it's, it's my favorite one. It's just so homegrown and so homespun. And everybody involved is so passionate and caring and all the work and the love and the care. 20 years, man. Right, it's amazing. This this festival is almost old enough to drink, although it won't because it smokes weed. Cool. 
Just so you know, I'm laughing, but I can't. I got yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, it in a I understand. Right? No, no, you're no. killing. You're telling good. Understand. It's all good. I'm all rambly, like I've been no, smoking it's hash. Great. It's great. It's great. So, uh, don't you have a mag? You, you I'm magazine. the editor in chief of West Coast Cannabis Magazine. You can find us at westcoastcannabis.com. We're distributed from San Diego to Seattle. We only put out like 40,000 issues a month, so we're kind of hard to find, but we're hella popular. Uh, and you can follow me on the Twitter. We're here to inform and inspire the medical cannabis, not just the medical cannabis community, but the cannabis community. My whole thing was, I didn't really see anybody talking about everything that's going on, on the West Coast, because really the West Coast has kind of been at the forefront for the longest time, since 1994 or so. It's really been at the forefront of the medical, or not just medical, but of the cannabis freedom, the marijuana legalization movement. The West Coast, I feel it, not to say that New York isn't doing anything or or Arkansas or Montana or whatnot, but Washington, Oregon, and California have clearly been pushing the envelope in terms of cannabis legalization. And I just wanted a way to keep everybody informed on it, to inspire people to see what's going on. Like, hey, maybe they did, they're doing something in San Diego, we could try that up here to, to get around these laws or to work with these legislatures or something like that. Here's the problems these guys have. Let's make sure when we talk to our politicians, we don't run into these same problems. Things like that. Let everybody know where the events and the protests and the festivals and all that stuff are. You can find them at Booth 813. We have free ones. Um, so, yeah, because I, I love the marijuana, you know, and I, I think it should be free. It's fantastic. You talked about the parks in San Francisco. You're used to smelling that smell. All the time. Is it, is it different in San Francisco than it is here in Seattle? And what are those different? What the kind the of smell or the no, just, just the, the openness? Yeah. Yeah. The culture, the, that attitude, that openness. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, it's San Francisco, California. Uh, I forget. And, and I don't know. One of the things that keeps it hella cool, I guess, is... I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong when I smoke a joint, so I'm not sitting around looking furtive or trying to be scared or anything. And for good or for ill, you know, um, it's just uh, it's just something that's accepted. People just like, they, it's no big deal. Marijuana is not a big deal in, in San Francisco. Somebody wants to smoke a joint, of course you do. It's a sunny day or you're standing in line for a movie or something. Clearly, you'd like to smoke a joint right there. You're sitting on the patio at the bar. Um, here and it's coming around people are, are way more open-minded about it and i've definitely smoked a joint in every section of this town with just about everybody i could on the random i've had some great adventures up here I met a dude from france and these two exchange students one time at the space needle we smoked out big it was hilarious uh i can't tell you the rest of the story it ends up me walking home sad but the point is i would never have had that adventure in seattle if it weren't for cannabis um it's, you know, and you guys fool people up here. Let me tell you, this is this is this is how the Seattle Hemp Fest fools people. You come up here. I've been up here seven, eight, nine years in a row for the Hemp Fest. One time it rained for about half an hour. Other every every year you come up, it's all beautiful and sunny and 75 degrees, and people come out and they're like, oh man, Seattle's a shit. And then they come out here and move here, and then it rains for 10 more months a year. You catch people with that shit every year. You know you do. You know you do, which is cool. I, I know the secret because I've been here in December, but that's how it is. Stay cool, brother. Woo, stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool, stay cool. Go sugar leaf, sun leaf. Uh, <laughs> um, what do you think? What's your slant on the. Let's talk about medical first. Dispensaries, big deal. How is that in California? What's your feel about that kind of angle towards legalization? That slant towards legalization? You know, when. when uh, when, when people first started talking about medical cannabis dispensaries as a stepping stone to legalization, I wasn't really, I didn't really feel it. I didn't really see the way. But um, people have definitely been pushing the envelope on that. And also, as people noticed that uh, medical cannabis dispensaries and everything haven't led to higher crime, it's not really a big deal. 18 year olds or 15 year olds aren't getting access to medical cannabis. You understand what I'm saying? And for the for the medical cannabis clubs that are doing it right, they could be definitely be an asset to the community where they have everybody in their town on their side. Now, there's a lot of cats who maybe aren't doing it as right. And that's where you have problems. We always stress a good neighbor policy to make sure it's cool because you want people to have positive connotations when it comes to cannabis, medical cannabis or recreational cannabis. You want people to realize that cannabis users are not, you don't have problems. You know what I'm saying? No one's gonna vomit on your stairs, right? If you live around the corner from a bar, you get vomit on your stairs every other Friday. If you live around the corner from a medical cannabis club, 
hopefully somebody will help you carry your groceries to your car. You know what I'm saying? That's the way that people should think about it. Always try to leave it a little better. Um, in terms of legalization, legalization, I think it could be a stepping stone. I think Radical Russ, Russ Belleville from the Normal Podcast, he uh, his concerns about marijuana being a stepping stone is that states and, and legislatures will seize on the marijuana aspect and tighten the rules and make it even harder. Like the New Jersey medical marijuana rule, you can't grow your own medical marijuana. Right? California, Oregon, you can grow. Washington, you can grow. Montana, you can grow. A lot of these, a lot of these states, you can't grow it for yourself. Which is one of the beauties of marijuana as a medicine and as a herb is you could just throw, put it in your backyard. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars or whatnot. Just take care of it next to your tomatoes. Um, so there, there are yins and yangs for both sides. I think we're definitely leaning more and more toward America. I think the fight. One of the one of the challenges I think is we don't want to get a, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves as a marijuana community and think that the legalization battle has already been won because there's medical marijuana de decriminalization. Um, it seems to me sometimes that people are already fighting over what legal marijuana is going to look like when they have when when marijuana is not even legal yet. You know, we got to remember to stay together and get marijuana legalized and then start fighting over the regulations and all that shit. Let's let's legalize it first. You know, um, I think that's the thing. How many more questions just out, just out of curiosity? Okay. This is my last question. I'm going to let you go. I hope I'm not too rambly. No, you're great. It's beautiful. What do you think the role of taxes will play in the legalization? Oh, I'm a fan. Uh, remember, the state's a gangster, right? So if you're paying protection money to the gangster, you want protection. They already take taxes now, and yet they're still raiding people. So if you're going to take my taxes, you got to give me the protection. You guys already run the lottery. You already run the numbers. You can get in on the marijuana game. It's not really, marijuana is the only group of criminals I know who want to go legit. It's the only ones I know. The only criminals I know who want to go legit are cats who grow marijuana. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I think it would be, if I was in charge of it, if I was the marijuana czar for California, it would be pretty simple. Uh, it's $5 a plant in your backyard, up to about 20 plants, unless you need some, some sort of industrial permit. Uh, it's 10% when you sell it to the club, 10% tax to the state, 10% tax when you sell it to the consumer, right? So we kind of double dip, but in return, you get to do what you want. I don't think that's too big a deal. That's not too big a deal. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that would be pretty simple. That's where I'm at. So vote for me. Cool. Thanks Thank a lot, man. And Guy, thank you very much. Thank you. That was brilliant. Did yeah, you? brilliant. It was, Thanks, it was. There was. There's so much, so much little Thanks. golden nuggets in there, brother. You have no idea, man. Absolutely. Okay. We'll talk. Absolutely. Okay.